Hi guys. Hey, uh, Scott sent me a fuel bowl that needs replated for the uh, G503 Jeep Rebuild Series. And this is something that a lot of people can do and uh, really zinc plating, something people can do to improve their projects um, that you can do at home. And it's really not that expensive. And uh, so I just wanted to show you the process that I'm doing. So here's this fuel bowl. I have it chucked up in my lathe. And uh, I'm trying to, if you look on the inside there, you can see the rust pitting in the bottom. So I, uh, I soaked it in uh, muriatic acid. Got it cleaned up pretty good. Got some old, uh, look like silver paint maybe off of it. And uh, some of the old plating came off. And then um, a lot of the rust out of the bottom came out of the whole, the little pits. So I'm just spinning it on the lathe. Got some emery cloth. And uh, we're going to try to clean it up here a little bit. So... We're just going to polish the interior a little bit here. Try to uh, make sure we're down to good clean metal and smooth it out a little bit and get a better cleaning job when it's smooth. So we'll clean that up and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, she's starting to clean up in there. So, uh, I'm going to give the bottom a light, quick sandblast again and try to get the last of the um, rust out of the bottom. Okay, here's my refrigerator sandblast cabinet, which uh, a couple of coffee cans to make the entrances and band clamp on on the inside, some... Uh, rubber gloves and a Luxan window a little fluorescent light inside hooked up to the air compressor <laughs> and uh, it seems to work pretty good it's full of aluminum oxide costs a little bit for aluminum oxide but then you aren't breathing silica dust and the aluminum oxide works real well and for a long time okay so that cleaned her up a bunch and you can see the pitting doesn't have any rust in it anymore. And, uh, you know, the sandblasting makes some dust. So, but at this point in the game, you don't want to use water. So I use a little carb cleaner because um, that'll all evaporate off and uh, not leave anything uh, to prevent the electroplating. So I'll clean it up one more time here and... Uh, then we'll uh, get it into the uh, zinc bath. Okay, so it's in uh, my plating solution. And I have a ring of zinc. Well, it's a zinc tin mix. Inside the cup, you can just see the rim of the cup. That's okay, because I'm going to flip it and put the zinc on the outside later. So... Um, you can see the little bit of bubbles right here, real fine. That shows the plating process is beginning. Those bubbles produce a little bit of hydrogen gas. Not enough to really be a fire hazard or anything. But, uh, yep, so that's uh, the plating process going on right there. And with the surface area there, I think we'll let it sit for about 20 minutes. And you can see the it's just, uh, we got three volts going from two D cells. And uh, just simple, the positive goes to the zinc. And then the electrons want to go to the negative, which is hooked to the uh, fuel bowl. 
now you can see after it's been sitting a while all the hydrogen bubbles forming and uh, she's really cooking I put in a fresh set of batteries and uh, yeah she's cooking much better now so here's the typical anode it's a combination of tin and zinc um, and uh, oh and then here's what I refresh my mix with a little ammonium chloride and that that basically provides the salt for the electrical conductivity and then zinc chloride and uh, that goes in the solution so we'll let that cook for a little while longer and see how she does okay I didn't film it but I pulled the bowl out and I rinsed it off and I rubbed it down lightly with uh, really fine uh, triple out steel wool um, you get a little bit of a a crusty buildup sometimes and uh, so it doesn't zinc plate quite as thick when it does that so by cleaning it all off prepping it up real nice again without removing any of the new zinc and then putting it back in um, we'll give it an extra coat of zinc here so that should uh, build it up uh, a little bit extra thickness. Zinc coating really isn't all that th thick unless you uh, hot dip galvanize. Then it's real thick like you would see for fence post bolts and things like that. But zinc plated nuts and bolts just have a super thin coat on them. And a second round uh, adds a little longevity to that. Okay, so the ball's fresh out of the bath. And you can kind of see a little bit of gray zinc sludge there down inside. So we'll go rinse that off and uh, get her cleaned up. Okay, that's after wiping it down and getting the excess off. So it leaves it a dull color. Now most zinc process, plating processes, run it through a uh, tumbler or something like that. And uh, I don't have a tumbler that big. I just have uh, a tumbler for making uh, freedom rounds. <laughs> and uh, so a light buff with triple out steel wool should do the trick. Okay. I, uh, lightly did it with steel wool and gave it a quick rub down with a paper towel and she's all zinc coated and should be good for some years to go i would suggest putting a coat of diamond clear on the exterior set in diamond clear you won't be able to see it but it will add another layer of protection to the exterior to keep it from rusting especially in a humid environment. On the inside, the water usually sits down at the bottom. That's why it's all pitted down there. So uh, if a Jeep gets parked for a long time and there's water in the fuel, that's where it'll reside. And this will buy you a little bit of time before you rust out the bowl. Um, but yeah, so hopefully that does the trick for you guys. And... Uh, Show me your zinc plating projects if you give it a go. I'd be interested. Take care.